master switch, ignition, electric pump, and here we go. Hey everyone, we're at the Canadian Forces Baseboard and Military Museum. We're with Fred today, who I, I'm sure all of you have seen from the first video. Fred, can you tell us what we're going to do today? Uh, today's plan is we are hoping to get the, the Husky running today. Uh, we did some checks last week where we found out we're having some problems with the fuel system. So today's plan is to get in, uh, make sure the fuel system's working, get it all bled, all the different lines, make sure all the connections are good and working, and then hopefully be able to fire it up and get it to uh, make some smoke and some noise. Awesome, let's get to it. All right. We're, we're going to try and get that off. Right now we're just going to hold this open. This is the return things, line coming back from the engine. Some things are making sense and some aren't. Let's see if we get flow, better flow, see how much air is in there. If it is, then it may be the challenge going back to the, uh, the return to the fuel tank. But I think this, if we get good flow here, we have all through the engine system. It's between here and the tank on the return line. We're trying to get cleared out now to see potentially it was just some dirt in this quick disconnects. These are here for when they're changing engines. They can disconnect the fuel line without making it simple and easy. So we're gonna just try holding this in. She doesn't want to come apart. She's been together for a while. And then uh, run the fuel pump and see if it's going to bleed out how much air we get out. Where's the disconnect for the supply? Oh, okay. Okay, you ready for pump? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, we're a bit pressure. So, so, are we still dealing with air somewhere? I think we're dealing with restriction. Okay. So what are you checking out, Fred? Well, we have good flow to this point from the pump. It goes through this quick disconnect and into the primary fuel filter. So now in order to confirm this is good, the quick disconnect isn't blocked up or caused no restriction, we'll pull the line off the inlet to the primary fuel filter and then see what kind of flow we have there. And if it's restricted flow there compared to what was coming in here, then the quick disconnect is our issue and needs to be cleaned up. So. One of the things you guys are going to notice is just the sheer amount of disassembly we're going to have to do to get at certain parts of the engine. Here, you can see Fred removing the cover for the air filters, just so he can get access to a line hidden underneath. Then, with that line disconnected, we're able to power on the pumps and see if we get a flow. Alright, sir. Purr, give us some purr. Alright, here we go. We have the yeah. I, I turned it off. Okay. I, I just gave you a quick burst. Hit it one more time. Okay, no, we're good. Yes, sir. We need good flow there. So from here it goes to the fuel pump, mechanical, and then back to the secondary. So let's jump that and see if we can get off the... No, it's sort of on the opposite side. I'm just going to climb out and tread. Yep. Kind of isolate out a chunk. 
we can go to the secondary, pop one of the lines off it. If we can get the inlet line to the secondary off. See it'll come. And then do the same test with it. That makes sense. Um can you get to it? This is sort of the question. Right there. Okay. That's it right there. Unfortunately for us, we're back to the theme of parts being hidden behind other parts on the engine. This means we'll have to partially dismount this reservoir to get at the fuel line hidden behind it. Gotta love my engineer! Yeah, you get the back ones, I will. Yeah. What did you have to do to get at that line? Well, the, uh, well I was going to remove the other line, but it's full of oil, so we got to put that back on. It's just one line comes down and the fuel line goes up and behind it, so we just got to get that fitting back past that line to get it out. And then we can get into a bucket when we run the pump. We don't make as big a mess as... You ready? Yep. Yeah, we're close to what we potentially had, yeah. Probably about what we had to return be close. Then there's no pressure of any sort compared to the other pressure we were getting. Now, Colin. Yeah. Were you saying that the fuel goes if we're trying to force fuel through? But if, I guess it's, yeah. So if we, so say we pop a line at the fuel pump. Well, what, I, what I'm tempted to do is fuel shut off on. Crank it over. Crank it over with. Yeah. Yeah. Electric pump on and then a quick crank. Yeah. And does that. Let's see what happens with the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So. Master switch on. Ignition on. Where's the, okay, there's the starter. Okay, so I'll give you some. Yep. Um, so you got electric pump. Yep. And I'll just briefly hit yep. the starter. <laughs> Did it change anything? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we need to recheck that rear one again. Was it cranking? So is it, did we stay at pushing or did we? Here, here I'll give you some. Give me a dribble again. And potentially that makes sense if the pump yeah. is stationary. Yeah. That we're trying to force it through. That's right, yeah. yeah. A stationary pump. And, and we're never going to get to a Unless that pump is cranking. That's right. We're not getting the pump on through here. Right. At least now we know, okay, we've done all the checks. Fuel is flowing where it needs to be. I'm saying it's sufficient volume based on the low battery and pump and not cranking over really hard. But, yeah. but if, you, if we can get our spark fire once, then the mechanical pump will definitely drive that pressure up for us. Things are looking really positive now, with confirmation that fuel is flowing freely through the engine. The next task is to connect the Husky to another vehicle for electrical power using a slave cable. And then, all that's left is to crank the engine and see if it works. For the purpose of providing power, we decided to use the museum's T-Lab, which is a Canadian variant of the American M113 armored personnel carrier.
so now we got slave cable put onto it, give our battery a bit of boost. So we've checked all the systems, the fuel's going everywhere, we can see, so we still got the return line disconnected with a quick disconnect. So we're just going to run the electric pump, crank it over to get the mechanical pump working, and see if we can flow a bit of the old fuel out of the lines, clean the engine itself out, and get a good decent flow going, and then we'll hook the return line back up to the tank, and then we'll give her a shot and see if she's going to make some smoke. Electric pump. Starter. Okay, good, good, good. We had pretty good flow going through there, so we should at least get some indication that there's something going on. So after trying to start the engine a couple times, it became clear that while fuel was being fed into it, the fuel wasn't actually being used. So we decided to take the covers off the engine and inspect the injectors to see what was going on. some reason we're not getting fuel so we're going to check just to make sure the linkages are all moving but to make sure there's not something going on where they're stuck in an old fuel position and even though we're trying to release it with the linkages it's not releasing for some reason or there's something going on with the racks on the fuel control because uh, that's why she's not getting fuel and firing fuel's available we're going to make sure the racks roaming allows the fuel into the injector so we'll inject it into the engine to fire it Right now we pull one rock cover off, we'll just check all the linkages, make sure everything's working. Maybe potentially pop one of the fuel lines here just to make sure there's no air stuck in there that might be causing us grief as well. Where it's full of air and not being able to bleed itself. And then go from there and see if we can get something working that way. releasing it. I thought we had had movement out of it. We did have movement before, but we've lost it somewhere, so we're going to need to check the other side too. Probably pull it off and have a look and see what's going on, get them freed up again. But that's where our problem is. She didn't know fuel, and she's stuck there, and she's not releasing out to allow the throttle to take over. 
that's why it's not moving. Keep moving this, it's not, that should allow that to go. Come back out and then you throttle the work. Can you step on that accelerator? Yep. What's the second line? Just for good measure, we decided to check the other side of the engine as well. Whoa, Whoa you okay? What? I thought the power was off. Me too. So, what we've got happening is the uh, for some reason when we were cranking it over initially just get the oil pressure built up before starting it we pull it to a no fuel position on the racks it seems to now it's stuck there so it did not release from that position that's why we've been having not starting we initially checked everything was working fine there was no issues but something has happened since then so if you down in here this tube here from here to here is essentially the throttle tube it rocks back and forth, but right now it's stuck, so it can't rock. And what that does on each of the injectors, there's an arm that opens and closes the port into the injector to allow the fuel in, so that as it compresses and it burns it, and that's what gets your throttle action on this. So right now, we just gotta figure out why that is jammed up, get that freed up, and we should be able to make some smoke with this puppy. I'm not finding. So this one should be driving. It's not. It's just overriding. Except this one. Oh man, it's still not moving. Is the other side moving at all? No movement over here. I'm moving at all. Okay. Pop the pin on that side as well and see if that makes isolate the governor from the rat. Mine's moving. Yours moving your side? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's working, so it's injections. Alright. So yes. It's gonna need some studying. Just to confirm what the hell. So who was stuck? Well, Fred, the, uh, the day didn't turn out as planned. 
No, no, we ran into a few things. We did get all the fuel systems sorted out. We now, uh, we have fuel, the electric fuel pumps working properly, the mechanical fuel pumps turning. Uh, we're getting fuel flow through the whole engine right back to the return line. There's a couple uh, quick disconnects and that we had to sort out, but we got that done. And then when we tried again to fire it up, we still weren't getting any fire from it. So we pulled the rocker covers and found out that a couple of the injectors appear to be seized on the racks, so they're stuck in a no fuel position, so that's why it's not firing it up and we're not getting any kind of reaction other than we try with ether. So right now we're uh, back on hold again. Hopefully next week we'll be able to get in, get some information, get the Jake brakes off, pull a couple of the injectors and see what's going on with them, get them cleaned up, back together, and hopefully in a week or two we'll be able to make it work. All right, thanks a lot, All right. Fred. I'll I'll let you get back to the North Pole now. Well, thank you. Thank I mean, you. no, no yeah, back to... Just don't tell the kids. Yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah. See you guys around. <laughs> See you.